what's going on everybody so today i'm just bringing you this video it's going to be based on the asrock b450m pro 4. this is a micro atx board i picked this up to build another computer for another customer so before we do that we're going to be taking a look at it we're going to be doing some unboxing maybe some memory a little bit of memory overclocking and uh, some cpu overclocking with this thing and see how far we can push it all right so let's go ahead and get to the unboxing here okay so the first thing that greets us is uh, memory configuration here this uh, is just detailing how ASRock recommends that you set up your memory you have your manual driver CDs and you also get a case badge here this is just a sticker but, uh, for those of you who are fans of this, this kind of stuff it's a uh, it's pretty thick so yeah, nice little ass rock sticker there if, it, if you're into this kind of things but yeah we're not going to use the drivers on this city by the way we're going to go to the website and get the latest drivers from there and then you get your back plate here just our ordinary all metal back plate. You get your uh, M.2 screws here for screwing on your SSD into your M.2 slot. Don't lose those. And you get your SATA cables. One is at a 90 degree angle there. Okay. Okay. So let's get to the uh, motherboard here. Put the box here to the side. Let's get all these uh, accessories back in here. All right, guys. So let's take a look here. And here is the motherboard. Okay. Okay, so let's take a good look at this thing here. And um, I have to say that it's got a pretty nice looking layout as far as aesthetically um, aesthetics go. Um, it doesn't have that matte black to the PCB, that color, but it does have a darker color. It doesn't have that you know, dark brown that um, other uh, boards have seen have so it looks pretty nice and um, the heat sinks for the VRMs are actually a you know a bit taller than I expected um, which is quite nice in my opinion I think that this should help with the VRM cooling there and not only do you get um, VRMs here on this side of the, the MOSFETs but you also get them up here for your SOC you see the uh, thermal pad there between the, uh, the MOSFETs and the, um, the heat sink that ASRock is using. Very nice. You also get four DDR4 uh, slots here, DIMMs, for up to 3200 megahertz. We're going to see if we can push um, beyond that, but um, of course, there's never any guarantees with that. And here you have your 8 pin power connector here up at the top, and um, your You've got a CPU fan header here and another uh, chassis fan header, and it looks like actually that's a that's a, an additional CPU fan header. So you can you know you can use both of them as fan fan headers. Basically, that's what they're trying to say. Um, if you want to add a, like a pump or anything like that, you also get another fan header here at the bottom. You can see that there. Let's see what else do you have? Any other? Yeah, and you get two more fan headers here the bottom uh, PWM of course it's very nice um, you don't have any debug LED lights with this board unfortunately but uh, that shouldn't be a problem uh, here you have your AMD fan LED for your um, for the LED lights on your AMD cooler if you get like a rate cooler uh, rate cooler that has the uh, LEDs on it and uh, your 24 pin power cable there of course 
Here also you have your USB 3.0 port for the front port of your case, front case connector there. You have uh, four SATA 6 connectors here at a 90 degree angle. You get one SATA uh, M.2 slot here. You get your front panel connections here for your connectors for your LED lights and hard drive activity lights, all that stuff you get uh, down here. But yeah, so you have two M.2 slots with this board, which is really nice. But this one here is a PCIe NVMe slot. So uh, if you have a uh, NVMe card, you want to put that here. This will be your just regular SATA, SATA 6 M.2 SSD. If you're going with that, here you have your two USB 2.0 ports here at the bottom, your COM connector, you have your another RGB um, connector here, which is really nice. You have your audio out for your front panel, and you have an isolated PCB as well on this uh, on this board. Uh, I'm not sure if this lights up. It might. Well, we'll see when we turn it on. And you have a uh, high quality caps as well for better audio audio quality and um, you also get a one pci uh pcie four times four here one one slot here for your if you're using a um like a, a pcie type of ssd or you know a sound card or anything like that you have that there okay so let's see what else I don't want to forget to mention anything here but yeah pretty pretty neat layout here so let's go ahead and move on to the back plate here or to the io ports here up at the top you see your two usb 2.0 ports you have your legacy ps2 connector there you also get this is really nice uh going old school here uh you got your vga connector there you have your hdmi connector you have dv uh i'm sorry uh hdmi uh connector you also get a type c connector there USB 3.1 port, USB 4 USB 3.0 ports, you have your gigabit Ethernet port here, and your audio out. So, yeah, very nice looking, very nice layout. Let's look at the back of the board here. Not that I'm expecting to see anything out of the ordinary, but, um, yeah, you know, just normal layout. Pretty simple. Um, one thing that I do pay attention though is again is these uh, these uh, soldering points here on your PCI slots. Um, I see that they're using some soldering there. I mean, I've seen the other boards that use a little bit more than this, but this should be enough. I mean, it's, it's better than having the the old school um, like this uh, retention brackets here instead of having this plastic stuff here. Now they're using soldering, which is really nice. And see, that's what I mean there. That's what you don't want to see. You see how that is uh, not using any solder there. It's just uh, the pin sticking out. You don't want to see that here. Um, so that's very nice that they're doing that on your on your main slot there. And you don't want these plastic stuff here either. So yeah, very nice. And one thing I did notice is that they're using plastic um, retention pins here for your for your VRM cooling. For your heat sinks so these things can easily just move like this if you notice that i mean this is not an issue because it, it, it does have a thermal pad there so it shouldn't do any damage but um i prefer the screws in my opinion that's just you know i think it's more durable and a lot more reliable but uh yeah this shouldn't be an issue it shouldn't be a like ma major concern or anything like that but um okay so aesthetically speaking the board looks really nice i think you guys would agree with that this is the uh, ASRock B450M Pro 4. This is the Micro ATX um, option by ASRock for the AMD AM4 platform. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and uh, get this thing fired up or installed, I should say, and then uh, we'll take a look at the BIOS. Going into the BIOS, we're greeted by the typical ASRock layout. Uh, very simplistic, very intuitive. I love the ASRock BIOS. This, um, this is uh, actually one of my favorite boards uh, for overclocking, just you know, just to doing tweaking and things like that. Um, I have a lot of fun with this with this setup here. 
Um, as you can see here, I was able to push my, my 2600 to uh, 4.2 gigahertz, stable 24-7. Uh, tested with Prime 95 for over two hours, you know, uh, small FFTs as well as uh, memory. Tested it with uh, tested it with uh, large FFTs for memory memory stability. I did a little bit of tweaking on the sub timings as well using the Ryzen calculator just to give me a little boost in performance there using the XMP profile. Um, and everything, you know, was flawless. Uh, sparked right up. Uh, as soon as I hit the power button so I had no complaints with this board very stable very nice uh, uh, feature layout and uh, also uh, I didn't see much V droop um, I, it has a decent uh, VRM which I'm going to go um, a little more into here later in the video but uh, I wanted to mention that um, up front so it, it is it is okay it is pretty decent it's better than a lot of uh, B entry B450 motherboards that I've seen out there so this is one of uh, one if you're gonna be looking for a B450 motherboard make sure you put this one here on your list um, and as you can see I'm, I'm turning off all the uh, the the things that you should turn off if you're gonna be doing overclocking like uh, AMD cool and quiet you know turn that off a uh, global C state turn it off you know you have uh, another thing another good thing that I love here is how Astrog has implemented their fan control you know it's very simple very straightforward you set the speed you, you know it gives you the um, uh, the options are to choose whether if it's PWMDC mode or whatever and you go from there and you can see the changes live actually as soon as you select the, the speed or whatever you want it actually you can hear the fans wind up so very nice bio setup so now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some applications here um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just do this kind of uh, in a raw format I'm not going to edit so much of the stuff out because I want you guys to kind of you know see what it will be like in you know real life experience as you're going through the operating system here you know starting up and looking at your at your processor speed the voltage you know what that looks like uh, your memory timings your you know your board bios all that stuff and here are my timings that I'm using with the by tweaking the sub timings and the primary times with the rising calculator you can see here all the changes that I made in case you missed that in the bios and just to give give you guys a, uh, an idea what you can expect here you know with with this little board and doing a little bit of overclocking there on the memory uh, here's some IDA 64 extreme just quick testing I'm sure I can get a little squeeze out a little more performance but I wanted to just kind of give you guys show these here this results here kind of you know live uh, so to speak but uh, uh, just so you guys get an idea what you're looking at there and uh, also we're gonna go into prime 90 uh, not prime 95 what am I saying uh, Cinebench Cinebench R15 and do a quick run and keep in mind that I have um, other stuff running in the background so that's you know the, the score that you see here uh, it's not a, a direct indicative of the actual performance I mean you can achieve a higher higher performance or higher score by doing a little bit of um, um, tweaking still and also uh, shutting down some programs that are running in the background so yeah uh, very stable I'm very happy with this board so um, highly recommend it but now let's go ahead and talk about a little bit about some extra features if you go to the ASRock website so let's go ahead and get into that going to the ASRock website and you can see it a few more details on this board like AMD Quad Crossfire X if you want to go for that route if you want to set up a, like a Quad Crossfire setup on this board I wouldn't recommend such a thing because of the space and you know just the heating and all that stuff but if that's your thing hey to each drone um, I was not able to go very much higher than 3200 megahertz on this board for the RAM but uh, I was uh, able to improve the performance nevertheless using the Ryzen calculator and just uh, you know did a few uh, sub timing uh, tweaking there and that got me pretty good stable performance um, also they're using a two ounce copper PCB uh, with this board here which is typical I mean ASRock they pride themselves in this, this kind of stuff uh, also uh, they're using a premium 42 amp power choke now this is the ISL 95712 uh, controller that they're using for the VRM on this on this board this is a three phase a real three phase VRM but they're using doublers so it's like you know three plus three you know six uh, but it's a real three phase plus um, I'm sorry by two so it's three by two two for the SOC so um, 
it's not the most powerful uh, VRM that you're gonna find out there, but it is a B450 board. It is a, you know, so to speak, kind of an entry board, entry level board. So for $80, I mean, you, you're getting good quality. You got in, you're getting the ASRock quality here and you're getting pretty decent ventilation here with your uh, VRM heat sinks. You got, you know, those fins there to allow the air to flow through and get, you know, keep your VRM temperatures down in case you want to do a little bit of tinkering with your memory and, you know, bump up the clocks on your CPU. So that's really nice to have there. Uh, also, uh, you get Elden um, audio quality here too. Uh, so that's another thing to look, uh, to look at. Um, but the, yeah, overall, uh, like I said, I'm very happy with the board. I, you know, right off the bat, didn't have any issues with this. It just sparked right up as soon as I press the power button so this thing is just up and rolling now and uh yeah i'm going to leave it here guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit thumbs up like and subscribe and uh, i will see you guys on the next one you take care now bye bye